just finished replacing this compressor. I went ahead and replaced the contactor because the coal was burnt and the capacitor because it was a 45, but it was reading 37. Now that I started it up, head pressure is almost 500. Suction is about 155, which it should be about 145, okay? Why are the pressures so high? Let's take it apart, let's look at the coil. Because I did change the filter dryer as well. So, filter dryer is new. I'm gonna turn it off and open it up. So, got the outer exterior off of this outdoor unit. And this is why this compressor went bad. It's 11 years old, 410A. I just finished replacing it. So you can see it's brand new. And we're gonna make it last longer by cleaning this coil. All right, put some coil cleaner on this coil. Probably get some coil cleaner on it, spray it off, and then reapply coil cleaner again spray it off again. I'm going to put my coil cleaner on the outside and on the inside to make sure this new compressor lasts a long time. If I would have charged it up and then left it, that compressor wouldn't have lasted very long. One main reason is because there's no pressure switches. So if it runs high head pressure, it's not going to shut off. No pressure switches, and you could feel the liquid line, it was hot to the touch. So, let's let this set for a second and then spray it off. Man, this coil is super dirty. Super dirty. Look at all that. The customer is going to notice the difference in their electric bill for sure. don't know what coil cleaner to use check out the link in the description I'll drop a few favorites down there I bet this thing operates a lot smoother now all right we'll let it set and then hold up Now, it's starting to look a lot better. You can tell it's dirty because it's brown. Take a look. Always clean the grill off. That way it looks like you clean it. Sometimes people can't tell that you cleaned it, so. Make sure you wipe off the top, get you a rag, and then clean out the grill. Alright. 
Now I'm going to put it back together, see what the pressures are. You can tell it is a lot cleaner. It was packed solid. Back up and running. Let's check the pressures now that it's clean. Low side is 150. High side pressure is 320. So we dropped it 100. That's much better. Now our compressor is going to last. Check in the amp draw. Run load amps of that compressor while it's run is 7.6. Now let's check and see what it the rating is. Run load amps for that compressor is 12. So lock rotor amps is 64. So we're running at seven, well below. So that's great. Uh, checking the suction line temp, liquid line temp, 64 degrees on the suction line. The reason I replaced this compressor is because the homeowner called the customer and said that when they turned the unit on, it was tripping the breaker. And I came out, I took my meter, I measured the windings, and the windings measured resistance to ground. So a short to ground means that the windings are, uh, the insulation's worn off and the windings are touching or the windings are touching the shell of the compressor. So that's a short to ground. You wanna learn more about compressors, measuring the windings, I'll drop a couple videos on compressors down below so you can learn. Suction line temperature is 58. Uh, saturation temperature is about 53. So we've got a, about a five degree superheat. That's pretty good. Liquid line temperature is 86, 85, 86. The saturation is 100. So 86, about 14 degrees of subcooling. 15 degrees of subcooling and, and that's gonna change it's really hot up there in the attic so this will change so we had 60 and 85 86 so we had about a 25 degree split between the suction line temperature and the liquid line temperature hope you guys enjoyed the little video about the compressor going bad and what caused it and I hope you understand that if you are replacing a compressor that there is a cause and there is an effect for every service call that you go on there's a cause and there's an effect. I had a fuse blown, contactor caused that. I had a capacitor bad, I had a compressor bad, coal being dirty caused that. So I found the cause. I definitely was not gonna leave this like this. Otherwise the compressor was gonna go bad again and then I wasn't going to be doing the customer a good service by leaving that coil dirty. Now they can have more years and they can have a lower electric bill and the compressor can have a better life. Guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Let me know if you did learn something in the comments. Let me know what it was. If you got questions, questions can become content. I always make time to try to answer all the questions and to consider it as maybe a new video. So definitely leave those questions down below. If you don't have a question, let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. I'd like to know where you guys are from. Thank you to the viewers, the subscribers, and definitely the members. If you want to be a member, click the join button, become a member, and then I'll give you my email. Just let me know you joined. Also, don't forget to email me after I give you my email because I have a bunch of guides I can send you, like geothermal training guide, airflow and duct design guide, and you've got all the members only videos. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.